Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, I want to thank anybody who's new to this channel. If you haven't already, please take a moment and click that subscribe button. If you want to get notified about new videos as soon as they come out, click that little bell thingy and uh, you'll get told. Uh, so today we're going to try something uh, a little bit new of a format. I've been really busy at a new job lately. I've got a business trip coming up next week, but Man, I gotta keep up with the comics, and I gotta keep up with the comic book news. So today we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna review a, a few books. It was kind of a light week for comics. So I thought I'd review them, three in one show, and I'll review the three comics that I got this week, uh, and I'll review them in the order that I read them. And the order that I like to read my comics in is from least anticipated to most anticipated. So we'll start with the question number two might even bring up question number one, which I, I neglected to review on this channel, um, but we'll rectify that today. We'll take a look at Legion of Superheroes number three. Wasn't super thrilled with the storyline in the first two. Uh, the artwork is fantastic, though, and uh, I mean, just look at the, de the design on this cover right here. It's so beautiful looking and actually had some interesting stuff going on that uh, surprised me a little bit. And uh, I saved for last what's become my favorite Batman book on the stands, The Batman's Grave, number four uh, by Ellison Hitch. So let's take a look at uh, these books and, and, and more today on Comic Book News. All right, so today uh, we're going to talk about comics. We're also going to talk about, uh, in our wrap up, we're going to got a little something else from our swipe file. Uh, I want to talk about a little something I noticed. I picked up a book recently, and I saw a swipe of our uh, good friend of the show, Elliot R. Brown. I reached out and talked to him a little bit about it, and uh, I don't know. I thought I'd make note of it on the show. Today, we're going to talk about uh, some comics. We're going to talk about the question number two. This is the question, the deaths of Vic Sage. We'll talk about Legion of Superheroes number two, uh, where Superboy has brought uh, uh, Damian Wayne, Robin, into the future. And then finally, we'll talk about The Batman's Grave. A weird book, uh, unlike any other Batman book on the show, on the stands, for sure, in a lot of ways. But unlike a lot of other comics at all on the stands, in terms of pacing. And we'll get into that, and we'll talk about it. But, you know, why would we talk about it here? Why, when we spend a million dollars on a million dollar comics cam. So uh, let's start. Uh, let's do it in the order that I read them. We'll talk about uh, the question of any deaths of Vic Sage. This was issue number one, which uh, I didn't review. I read it, and I wasn't sure if I liked it or not. First, let's talk about the team. Um, Jeff Lemire, this guy started in indie comics and has quickly made a name for himself as a, as a player at DC. He's written their new Swamp Thing. He had his own Sweet Tooth book, and he started... Um, off in indie comics and, 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 you know, has really made a name for himself. Is he the right choice for the question? I'm not sure. Um, just because you wrote Swamp Thing doesn't make you a good writer on the question. That's no knock against you. Um, but, you know, when I saw this cover, I was excited because we, it, it marked the return of uh, Dennis Cowan and Bill Sienkiewicz to the question, who did the 80s series, um... And, and Bill Sienkiewicz, it's great to see him back on a regular book. He's doing the inking on top of Dennis Cowan. And it's good. It's serviceable. I, I, I don't know that um, uh, it's fantastic, and I'd be loving it if I didn't have affection for these guys already. I think that the Sienkiewicz inking is serviceable. But when I read a Bill Sienkiewicz book, I'm looking for something more than just like inking over some other dude's pencils. I want avant-garde. I want, you know, amazing. So... This is probably, if that's what you're looking for in your Bill Sienkiewicz, this is maybe not for you. And also, if what you're looking for is classic question, like we see here on the cover of number one, you're not going to get a ton of that, it seems. Um, we're going in a different direction. We're trying to add some more mythos and maybe um, mythological aspects to the question. I've always loved the classic Ditko character. Of course, this is the character that Rorschach was based on later Ditko morphed it into Mr. A his sort of objectivist guy but the 
to me, the question mark, like, <laughs> the, uh, the time when, before Ditko went really way off the objectivist deep end, I am not a fan of objectivism. Where I am somewhat a fan of libertarianism, objectivism just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Never, um, you know, absolute black and white. I think most people who live in the real world know that life is not always like that. And they definitely tried to stray away from that in the question in the previous series, taking it more into less than objectivism, more into Zen Buddhism. But now I'm not sure where they're going. As we're going, we're having flashbacks now into the Wild West. And the entire second issue was set in the Wild Wild West with a with a sort of uh, old west version of the question, great artwork, interesting story, kind of cliched, fighting racism in the old west. And then we have this sort of shaman type character who seems to know what's going on, and there's some sort of predestination and things that, I, frankly, I'm not a fan of for a character like the question. So. I, I like the uh, black label format, but uh, question. There is a big question. The question is, will I read number three? And it's not a lock. Let's just put it that way. Um, what, speaking of number threes, though, that were not a lock that I ended up picking up. Maybe it was because it was such a short, such a light week. <clears throat> Maybe it was because this is just such an appealing looking cover to me. But um, I... I, I I've decided to pick it up. I know um, there's a lot of Bendis bashers, including myself, out there. But man, when you got somebody like Ryan Sook, this guy is a modern day legend. This guy is really a fantastic comic artist. I want to apologize too for not talking about the artwork enough on my show. I, I really feel like Story is important and dominates, but comics are such a visual medium. It is literally an absolute 50-50. And when bo both the writer and the art team are great, it's better than, you know, some of the parts, if you know what I mean. And this is one of those times when, man, I don't, I don't, I, I don't really care. If there were no word balloons, I would pay something just to look at this stuff because the designs, the character designs are appealing. Um just his his everyday emotion uh, and anatomy and reactions are great the story still not loving it still not loving you know how many characters we're getting introduced to here but not really getting a very in-depth uh introduction to any one of them you know like we got this ultra ultra boy ultra lad and you know, we don't I don't really know if you didn't read if you aren't a long term Legion of Superheroes, you don't know what any of these guys can do uh powers wise. You don't really know what they're like personality wise, you don't know who their friends are. They're trying to like show some like oh the relationship between whatever Shadow Lass and, and Cosmic Boy and whatever, and they're trying to add that stuff in there, but um it's been three issues already and there's all these characters that we know just very little about. That didn't stop me from it from kind of enjoying it though. I liked, uh, like I said, the artwork is, is, is worth the price of admission for me alone and the character designs and stuff. But beyond that, um, oh, mon -El, for instance, is a great example. You know, if you don't know, mon -El is what? He's a like a Daxamite, right? Which means he has like basically all the powers of Superman, but no kryptonite allergy. I think Daxamites are allergic to lead, as I recall. But you're not told any of this stuff. This is just stuff that I happen to maybe know from reading the Legion of Superheroes. And how many people know Legion of Superheroes? Even among hardcore, even among comics fans, there's not a ton of Legion uh, aficionados that I know of. Um, they're out there, but not my circles. So uh, they've gone to Planet Gotham, and where they've got uh, Mordru captured, sort of a wizard, and. Uh, they, uh, cosmic or uh, Saturn girl is kind of trying to psych psychically interrogate, and we've got the Dawn Star character who's reporting in that there's, there's problems back on Earth, and and we're still back with this character. This is the Ultra Boy's father, the king of another planet, and fighting Monel. Monel already kicked his ass, and now he's fighting Superboy. And I, the story sort of just like hithered back and forth, like just went back to this moment. 
just didn't like it. it wasn't clear exactly what was going on but then finally we got to the point where okay superboy had brought damian wayne from the future and that was what this whole story was about right he brought him to the future He's like look i just joined the legion of supers you're gonna love this they got a whole planet gotham but as soon as anybody anyone in the legion sees damian wayne they're super freaked out by him and they're like, you got to take him back. We're going to erase his memory right away. And you just send him back. Where he's and he never, he never saw this. And they're talking about him behind his back is basically like, you know, he's baby Hitler. Like Damien Wayne's going to grow up to be something horrible, potentially. And they want to, the, 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 I guess the, the, the timeline is potentially fluid, so it could still be avoided. But so they're setting this up. And I don't know, I kind of like that. I, it's not a stretch at all to think that Damien Wayne is going to be up to, um, some badness. Um, but I think it's cool to set him up to, 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 to maybe set up those expectations and maybe see him defy those expectations or who knows, live up to them and become a cool bat villain in the not too distant future. I don't know. I'm a sucker for Batman, I guess. Speaking of which, let's talk about a good Batman book. Let's talk about Batman's grave. Now, Legion of Superheroes, number four. Will I read number four? I'm in on Legion of Superheroes for, for now. I'm going to read number four, I think. Unless all it's going to take is a fill-in issue with bad art. Just like it did with the Hawkman series when they had Brian Hitch drawing that. I was in it for 12 issues. Boom. It took one or two issues of sub-Hitch artwork to, to uh, make me leave. So, uh, Legion, you, you're, you're, you're in for now. Batman's Grave. Let's talk about it. I love it. Okay, Warren Ellis. I, I was kind of unsure. I didn't review number three here because I'm just was so unsure of what's going on and I'm still kind of unsure because this book is so unlike any other book on the market, let alone any other Batman book. And if I could sum up the difference in, in a word, that word would be pacing. Okay, so here we are in chapter four and We've had a sort of like a two-part, three-part. It's all it's always one story. It's all connected together, but we've had sort of issues with extended action sequences and then sort of like follow-up with Batman and Alfred. And it's just sort of this weird pacing. I don't know if it's meant to be read as a collected volume or what. It's going to be 12 issues. There's going to be a one-month break after issue number six. But Brian Hitch is keeping up and, and keeping up strong. Now, I'm not going to say this is as detailed as his work on, say, The Ultimates or... Or some other stuff but man that stuff took so long to come out often that uh, it really hurt the readability of the book so I'm really excited that Hitch has decided to take professionalism like as part of the game not just like elevating the art form because he is a fantastic artist He's one of my all-time favorites if you didn't know but there's more to it. He's going to be a professional. He's going to prove that he can put out monthly books, right? Everybody wants to be Jack Kirby or John Byrne, but nobody wants to sit down and draw all those pages and hit all those deadlines and put out all those books and please all those people. And I think Hitch is realizing that that that's his, his shot at a true legacy is going to be that. And just look, man, who is drawing with this level of realism, with this level even of backgrounds and back, uh, backdrops and... and this is the facial expressions. As I said, it's a, a, a little bit sub ultimates. See this, he's doing his own inks. In, in previous issues he had, it seems like every other issue he's inking his own stuff. And uh, the, the, the other stuff had uh, inks by, I forgot, I forgot his name, but fantastic inker. And uh, I like that stuff a little bit better, but hey, this is not shabby at all. And so we've got Batman, he's tracking down this pharmaceutical dealer from the last issue and uh and he's got some crazy stuff going on he's got these crazy drugged up henchmen working for him batman had a big battle with one of them last time and, and batman's like you know now I, I think about it that guy was kind of amped up on something so anyway now batman is just gonna come and we're gonna get an extended fight scene between batman and these henchmen that goes on for pages it goes on for most of this book it's set in two rooms, okay? But every moment of it, you know where Batman is in those rooms, and you know where these guys are in those rooms, you know because the backgrounds are meticulously drawn, and it's paced and drawn in such a way that it's moment-to-moment -moment action the way that you just don't see in comics that much anymore. And I'm sorry if, the, if it's a little dark for the Million Dollar Comics cam, 
but this is Batman, the Batman shrouded in shadows too, purposely, purposefully. All the gear, you know, Hitch's designs on gear and even his Batman armor and stuff are really just cool. I like them. They blur the edge between sci-fi and, and, and the real world and have definitely, as I've said before, informed so many things like the, the all the Marvel Universe designs of the, the Avengers came, you know, so much of them came from the Ultimates. Anyway, we've got this great, really tough battle with these guys that are just like, they're drugged up and they don't feel much pain. This guy has obviously like been through the ringer a lot and he's just talking about how his pain meds make him feel no pain. Batman's really not having too much trouble with them. They got knives and there's three of them on one, but he's, he, you know, he's Batman. And the, the, the other dude is coming after him with the pharmaceutical drugs and stuff, but he's just taking care of them. And I love it. This is pages now. Pages. Kill you. And finally, <laughs> Batman's like, are you done? And nice, brutal, brutal brutality i love it this guy's still kill you he's like oh would you just shut up batman showing some impatience and uh and some prowess in battle and i love it and you know i'm not gonna even talk about too much about the story give it away it's w warren ellis dialogue it's fun to read interesting we don't know exactly what's going on it's a mystery that is shaping up and building but everyone has been fun to look at and read just just fun as a visual marvel and a marvel of pacing of comics and then everyone has had a scene or two of this uh, uh batman and alfred and a little bit of their relationship and the kind of dry british humor of alfred and uh you know his kind of quirky relationship with batman and it's like every issue has been like this it's like action 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 oh let's reflect with alfred i'm not sure where it's going but we got 12 issues to get there and the pacing it's not decompressed per se because i mean it, it sort of is i guess i guess you could say it is a little bit decompressed but at the same time there's a lot going on in each issue and each page and visually there's so much visually for the eye to soak up it doesn't read super it doesn't have to read super fast like a like a, a lazily drawn comic might and even the even the uh, lazily drawn comic, they are not going to have an action sequence of this length and this skill. This is like the, this just shows Brian Hitch, like this just shows that what a penciler in comics is. And an inker, if you're penciling, in this he's penciling and inking himself. So he's not only the casting director, the, the stunt coordinator, the, the, he's the lighting guy. He's doing all the lights and shadows, right? And, and picking all the angles, he's the director of photography, doing so much and making it look so effortless is just why I just think Hitch is is the top of the top of modern guys. I want to see him do way more stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to pull in like the my official Marvel handbook book of weapons. Some of these are more like from out of. Um, the second year but if we take a look at some of this stuff um, exhibit a so they've got designed for a 1970s era sky pilot sky cycle and I'm gonna compare that to Elliot R. Brown's original designs for Hawkeye's Skymobile Right, and if you can look, even just to like how this cutout is done here, and this cutout is done here, and and the just the way all the ducting in here, and the ducting in here, it's almost identical, right? It's obviously cribbed straight from the Marvel Universe handbook, uh, as well as multiple other designs in here, right? Like especially uh, there's a, a piece with the, uh, the Punishers van that is just directly out of uh the erb handbook right so i you know what i don't even want to give this book any more credit it's the kind of book that i really would have liked but i looked through it and i didn't see a single bit of uh credit given to 
uh, Elliot R. Brown. I think it would have been nice to say inspired by, designed by. He certainly didn't get paid for any of this stuff because they didn't use any of his original work. I don't know if he gets royalties or not. Maybe he'll watch this and comment. Uh, but uh, I certainly know that he deserved the credit for being the inspiration because I don't think we would see stuff like this and definitely not of this quality uh, w without the many, many years of awesome work of Elliot R. Brown. So, um, folks, thanks a lot. I know this is a weird video, right? It's not as focused. It's not just one comic. I'm talking about a lot of stuff. It's a little bit longer than usual. This may be the way of the videos for me in 2020, guys, because I don't have as much time to do individual videos. I might just do sort of a roundup of my week's comics. Let me know if you like this format if, or if you prefer I stick to shorter videos that focus on single comics. Um, I want to hear from you because without you, uh, this channel would not be the success that it has been. We are growing and growing. We're edging closer to that magic number 1,000 for monetization. Oh my gosh. And that's when the shekels start pouring in and I start just pumping that money right into comics to review and talk about with you. So once again, thank you for liking this video if you did and not if you didn't and subscribing and especially for commenting. I treasure your comments. I read every single one and I respond to as many as I can. So uh, uh, give me your thoughts. Thanks for watching the show and uh, being a part of it. And we'll see you next time.